Firstly, uh, I would like to express my greetings to young students. I usually is describing uh, generation of 20th century and a generation of 21st century. So I belong the generation of 20th century. So now gradually ending. You are a uh, generation of 21st century. So 21st century at the beginning. So if the generation of 21st century, if you make effort uh, with vision, uh, with optimism, you will see better future, better world, more peaceful, more compassionate world. So sometimes I jokingly is telling people, hmm, you see, the generation, my generation, uh, the 20th century, I think we create a lot of problems on this planet. Uh, so in order, to, in order to do more work, this 21st century generation. <laughs> <laughs> if it's a world truly peaceful, uh, then I think you may remain relaxed. So world really troublesome. So therefore, you have Sort of more responsibility, more work you see, to change that kind of situation. So, so I really feel very happy seeing the young uh, human brothers, sisters, uh, and sort of uh, very fresh. So those young, young students, you see your mind uh, not yet spoiled. Now, you see, you are really uh, hopeful. You have the real sort of opportunity to change the world. Not by force, but by awareness through education. Basically, seven billion human beings uh, from birth, basic nature is more compassionate. There's no scientist to say. Uh, uh, so, since our basic nature is more compassionate, therefore there is real hope. If our basic nature is anger, then not much hope. So, Kershaya. Kena Kershaya. Sisha. There's no book there. ま、さっきで、で、ホステルのロラとあ、キャラ、ケンスジュ。ホステルチロラとキャラ、ま、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ち
then gradually some sort of education. Then uh, I help, we help uh, my Dalamut Trust, you say, help to build the Kasoda, uh, the, the ho ho hostel, hostel. Or, hostel or these things. Now, how many, how many years passed now? No, 14 years. Yes. Uh, I, hello everyone. Uh, I want to brief Your Holiness and everyone about the Secular Ethics Program. As uh, His Holiness told you that these children come from very poor background. They come from the slum area. Now they are educated and some of them are in junior classes and some of them have reached college. So uh, our ho program in the hostel is a holistic program. And there are different dimensions in the holistic program. We not only concentrate on educating them and making them academically sound, but we also think that it is our responsibility and we are committed to make them good human beings. We produce good human beings. That's what our main objective is. So uh, one dimension of it is ethical education. But since children from the hostel come from different backgrounds, some of them are Muslim, some of them are Christian, some of them are Hindus. While we were uh, trying to teach them about ethical education, we sort of came across this challenge that we cannot put one ethics over other. We can't tell that this ethics is better and this is supposed to be done, this is not supposed to be done because every child has his own faith. We don't want to change that faith. So we had this challenge as to how to uh, tell children something which is common to all humanity and that's how we came across secular ethics. Now secular ethics as a concept, if you are aware of, is a concept which is not very closely related to religion. It does not sprout out of religion. Ethics is not concentrated with religion. Ethics, it is ethics for everybody, for the entire mankind, for the beneficial of entire mankind. And there are various competencies. So we started teaching our children about these competencies, but uh, our program is not just about teaching or taking classes. We had different ways to uh, involve children in this. For little children, we had activities where they were talking about and there were stories shared about appreciating kindness and other competencies. And the senior children were involved in doing something which, is, which they like, which you know gives them space for their own creativity. So uh, first they started by painting panels. They got into uh, groups and they discussed and they painted panels, uh, which panels are put across in our hostel, Tonglen. But now our project has taken like a preliminary level and the secular ethics project has two dimensions. The first dimension is called the secular ethics yatra, which is an educative and an interactive program. So the children get together and they go to schools where they have these interaction classes with dance and songs so that the children are involved and all the new children in the schools can learn about secular ethics and then they can spread the message. This is the first dimension, which is an educative and interactive program. The second dimension is marketing social values, where we are taking the step to actually promote secular ethics, the competencies of secular ethics. Now, we, we've used the word marketing, uh, not because it's selling a product or anything, but because marketing appeals to the young and marketing has a big ambit, you know, you can get more people involved in it. So marketing social values is a project where... So uh, marketing... I, I want to, uh, to explain. So when we use the secular word, secular, according to Indian understanding, India's constitution itself is based on secular concept. So secular means, uh, since it's in this country, uh, a multi-religious nation. So therefore, you see, the, according to Indian understanding, secular means respect all religions. In the West, uh, secular uh, sometimes, you see, get the impression, the word secular, sometimes you see, people feel uh, disrespect to religion. Uh, I think during 
uh, French Revolution and uh, Russian Bolshevik Revolution, then secular means something anti-religion. Uh, but actually, I make distinction. What is the real meaning of religion? It's compassion. No one against compassion. Dogs, cats, they also love, appreciate love, compassion. Uh, I think actually the, during revolution period, France, uh, Russia, I think the the uh, 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 atheism, atheism means against religious institution. Because many religious institution is actually helping the Kasota ruling, also the Kasota ruling class uh, to exploit poor people. So that's quite right uh, to against that kind of institution. Uh, so religious institution. That does not mean against religion. But in any way, uh, uh, according Indian understanding, secular means respect all religion, and then also respect non-believer. That is something quite unique. So that's very relevant to this world. I think out of seven billion human beings, uh, around one billion non-believer. So uh, these uh, non-believer also part of humanity, our, our brothers, sisters. So therefore, I think Indian understanding, secular, respect all religion, and also respect non-believer. That's, I think, very relevant to today's world. Yes. Absolutely, like uh, His Holiness mentioned, and it is also mentioned in the Indian constitution. That's how our constitution works by uh, using the word secular constitution is supposed to be secular, respect to all religions and also non-believers. Uh, so coming back to uh, marketing social values, exactly because uh, the vision of His Holiness, we want to like spread and share it with all the people because it is relevant in today's society and it will be relevant for the coming generations also. So the marketing social values um, project we have uh, right now decided to paint some panels and display boards because if you go around, if you go in public places, you see so many things telling you to buy Coca-Cola, buy the new mobile phone, do this. We just want to make that attempt to say, you know, how about be kind, be compassionate amongst the hordes of so many things trying to say. We want to make an attempt to tell people to just have some social values and, you know, Make Don't use of that. ethics in your life. Mm -hmm. So that's our project for now on. And uh, also, it's not just the project, it's not just the vision that we sat together and we decided um, to spread the message of secular ethics. This all comes out from all these children because these children have suffered in their real lives and they made use of secular ethics. We've been teaching secular ethics since 2015. So now I want to uh, ask these students to share how they made use of secular ethics in their real life situations and made use of it. So I'll pass on the mic to Nisha first. Okay. Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you. Good afternoon, Guruji. Uh, my name is Nisha, and now I'm. S Not true, because of afternoon. <laughs> no. Good. Good morning, good morning, good morning, still. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Uh, I'm I, I, I think, you see, you, sorry, wait, 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 wait so, so long. So you felt now already the afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Sir, I am doing study in Bangalore in Christ University. Uh, so... Uh, in 2015, uh, that was my first year in Christ University as Christ University is very professional and uh, very rich students are there and they are very intelligent. So my first day in Christ University was really challenging. So I, 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 just, I just cried a lot because of uh, I don't have language, my English is very weak, 
and uh, in Christ all students and teachers are speaking in English only our lectures are also held in English and also they are very rich and like uh, it, it was very challenging for me to sit with them to talk with them and so and I cried and I asked Guruji like I can't do study here because I think it, it's not for me and uh, I, it's really challenging and they are very rich people and they are very big for me and I was about to leave my university, I was about to leave my studies. Then Tonglen recommended me to practice about secular ethics and my favorite, like I like uh, self-acceptance and courage. I studied about that a lot and then I accepted the challenge and that gave me courage and now I am very much confident. And I have, I have confidence now and I am able to speak in front of them. And also I am able to speak in front of, uh, like on the stage, in front of all that students. Like I got courage and I accepted the challenge. And I think we all should practice uh, secular ethics. Uh, seriously, it has changed my life. I was about to leave my studies. But thank you, Guruji. Wonderful, wonderful. Uh, thank you, uh, Guruji. Uh, myself, Pinky, and I recently passed my plus two class in medical stream, and I want to be a doctor. Uh, but uh, as we are very much inspired by your uh, vision on secular ethics, and uh, I really uh, like and love to learn secular ethics because it really changed my life. And uh, as we are learning in Tonglin Hostel about secular ethics on ten competencies. And uh, my favorite one is discernment. And uh, sometimes, uh, before learning the uh, secular ethics, sometimes some people uh, telling me something abuse language or uh, they gossiping me, and I, I really get uh, demoralized and I frustrated, and I can't do anything at that time when they are gossiping me. And uh, it's really difficult for me to deal the situation and for the judgment. But uh, after learning the discernment, I really am always trying to understand the situation. And I'm always trying to make the good decisions according to the reality. And it helps me a lot to making the good decisions. And I, I thought that it is really important to learn secular ethics because it changed our life. It is not like a study on uh, books or like uh, uh, academic study, but it is the study of mind and heart. So it is very important uh, to uh, in our daily life because uh, it uh, very relevant uh, to change our future, or it make uh, it helps me more to make good decisions according to reality. So thank you so much, Guruji. Thank you, thank you. Wonderful, Your Holiness. Uh, Today I want to uh, speak about uh, empathic concern. So as we have suffered a lot from uh, suffered a lot from different situations like poverty, discriminations, and various situations. So we are we were uh, we are poor. We are from poor background. So we have suffered from various situations. So uh, as we have suffered, so we don't want to suffer like society and people as we have suffered. So I think we are learning uh, empathic concern in secular ethics. So I think it's important to uh, guide the people about secular ethics, that how it's important to us. I think we can uh, make the society harmonious and peaceful. So we just want to help the people with this. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you. Your Holiness, myself Vijay, and I am doing BCom in Kangra College. And today, I am as we are learning secular ethics in our hostel. And and today, my my favorite is appreciating kindness because you know before I come to Tonglen, I have faced many difficulties, lots of difficulties, and even my some. Sometimes I used to go begging and sometimes my mother asked me to go there and I have never thought that I, I have such kind of opportunity to go in school or college. And because kindness changed my life, 
uh, initial stage I have most anger on that on those people who told me like that but now I want to do more kind on them. Thank you for your vision. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank your you. Holiness. My name is Henata. I come from Brazil. I, I didn't grow up in the slums, but I came from a, a very simple background. I was the first one in my family to go to university. Nowadays I study, I work for a company that is called Bain. We're one of the biggest strategy consultants in, in, in the world. It's an American company. We draw strategies for several companies throughout everything. And I just joined online three days ago, two, three days ago. I know how our Guruji and, and the entire online family to do their two-year plan as if they were a big enterprise to not only take out all these children from the poverty trap through education, as my family did to us, but also to, to make them better human beings and spread the secular ethics. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you. Really wonderful. It's a part of Kasota materialized materializing is <coughs> my sort of vision, my hope. Uh, but this is just the beginning. Your Holiness, we also would like to present you a leaf which is also the logo of the website we have created and the Facebook page so that more people can get involved and we can spread the message of secular ethics. Hmm? We would like to go. Oh yeah. Hmm? Very good. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. So now, uh, because of the 14, 14, 14, 15 years, uh, it is now, no matter how small, but one example. Uh, ethics without religious belief, religious sort of, not, not relying on religious belief, simply use basic human nature uh, and our own experience. They say, when no matter whether you will know or not, uh, someone is mad and smiling, feel happy. Even an old friend or that, we don't feel uh, happy, isn't it? So I think sometimes you say, uh, human mind I think too much sophisticated. I think animal may be more honest. So they, cat, dogs, if you treat them sincerely with affection, they appreciate. So the kindness or loving kindness is all living centered being. Generally, I think all living centered being are so the common sort of common sort of experience. Everybody loves that. Now, as I, I think they love me, the modern education, right? existing modern education, only, you see, materialistic oriented. 
Uh, so not much talk about our inner value. When about inner value, such as love, compassion, forgiveness, these things happen, then we usually, you see, rely on religious faith. Then religion, uh, I think, generally speaking, you see, I think religion generally, you see, very much also the kasoda combined with faith. Faith means without much reason. Now, Buddhist, Buddhist sort of was the way of thinking, particularly in the tradition. Uh, every point, you see, we analyze and try to find reasons whether there's negative, whether there's because of the contradictory reason or not. Always analyze. So certain faith or conviction uh, entirely based on the analyzed research. So that is something uh, quite unique in the Nalanda tradition. Buddha also, so Nalanda tradition. Therefore, uh, uh, so that's something different. Otherwise, a Buddha himself, you see, uh, telling us, oh, my follower, uh, monks, uh, scholars, should not accept my teaching out of faith, out of devotion, but rather thorough investigation and experiment. So that's something quite exception. Otherwise, I think faith usually there's not much reason. Uh, so now we need, you see, the uh, teaching or make awareness about inner value, uh, not uh, relying on religion, but simply uh, scientific findings and our own experience, our common sense. We can we can explain. So since. Now, I think more than 20 years, <coughs> you see, we are trying to, uh, trying to find ways to promotion about our inner value through education, not through teaching, but through education, through awareness. Uh, so we use the word secular ethics, uh, through secular way. So now, already some uh, research, some example. So I really appreciate this uh, is my Kazuta, my Kazuta, my dear Sonita. Oh, is my institution. You really done very well. Thank you. Now you Kazakhstan market Kazakhstan. Market Kazakhstan. Oh, so uh, with your own experience, now trying to share more people, it's wonderful, really wonderful. Now I have you seen uh, a few commitment. Number one commitment, I cons uh, number one commitment, I consider myself as a, another human being. I am one of the seven billion human beings. So we are social animal. Uh, the future of human happiness is everybody's interest. And uh, Western nations' future depend on East. Easterns depend on West. Similarly, South and North. So now, national differences not much sort of relevant. We must think about humanity. Uh, if we truly consider the other people, or human brothers, sisters, then no basis of killing each other, bully each other, or violence. So therefore, uh, now we. Uh, so so therefore, mm, now time come, we need the promotion of 
sense of oneness of humanity. That's my number one commitment. Sense of oneness of human being, humanity. Then automatically, sense of concern of their well-being automatically come. Then my second commitment is, uh, I am Buddhist. Uh, in this country, in India, religious harmony, I think, wonderful there. Some problem here and there, occasionally. That's understandable. But the overall picture, I think India is the I think only nation where all major world religious traditions live together. Uh, so it is possible to develop religious harmony. So my second commitment is try to promote promotion of religious harmony. Especially now these days and the the very source of compassion, where is religion? You see, that now causing anger, killing, division, division. Very sad, very sad. Uh, I look in Arab or in different places. Whew. Really, very sad. So, it is not time. Just Kasoda remain with Kasoda in different way. Indifference. No, it is moral. <coughs> now we must be active. Try to reduce uh, this violence, uh, particularly in the name of religion. So that's my second commitment. Now, third commitment. Now, uh, of course, I'm Tibetan. So, regarding the Tibet issue, uh, political responsibility, now we already uh, have political, elected political leadership. Uh, he uh, carried this responsibility. Since 2011, I totally retired. Uh, then, since then, uh, not only myself to retired, but also four century old Dalai Lama institution. Uh, traditionally, uh, become head of both temporal and spirituality. Now that I formally, voluntarily, proudly cease. Even now, uh, the Dalam institution remain for another this century. Hmm? Then, you see the future Dalai Lama. So no opportunity <laughs> to use the Dharma institution and exploiting other. <laughs> <coughs> so sometimes I jokingly say, telling people, the since the sort of dual responsibility, religion and uh, spirituality, no, no, a temple, mm. uh, since. Fifth Dalai Lama is in this sort of tradition started. Uh, so uh, I suppose 14th Dalai Lama. So if 15th Dalai Lama reappear, I mean, what he going to say? <laughs> but then uh, I use my common sense. Now no possibility to reappear. So I have the freedom to decide. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> so now another my so regarding Tibet, the preservation of Tibetan ecology. Uh, now, for example, India, Burma uh, and Kasati, Ganga, Indus, Indus, Indus River, all these major river, uh, the original source from Tibet. So, India also have certain right uh, to show your concern of uh, pure water inside Tibet, uh, pure ecology, right? uh, clean water, like that. Uh, and then, uh, and then Tibetan uh, tradition, Tibetan knowledge, uh, 
So Tibetan uh, Buddhist tradition actually come from India. So I always used to describe you, Indian, uh, historically our guru, our teacher. We are chela, the students. Uh, now fortunate or unfortunate, now chela have much knowledge. Guru, not much. <laughs> I think we Tibetan, uh, through generations, I think over a thousand years, we, uh, what we learned from Indian masters, we kept these not in temple, but study, at least 20, 30 years study. Uh, me also, I say, uh, in ceremony, uh, I put on high throne. But when study come, oh, my, my tutor occasionally threat me. <laughs> because I was quite a lazy student. <laughs> uh, but so therefore, you see, since I think my age, about eight or seven, eight years old, already started memorize some of these uh, uh, text which mainly wrote by root text wrote by Indian master. So our way is memorize these root text. All these root text come from India. And then some commentary, some wrote by Indian, and then later many Tibetan scholars wrote commentary. So then we learn these things. Uh, and then, in order to study, we extensively use logic. Uh, so someone say something, and immediately we try to raise Kasoda, get to questions, contradictions like that. So this is very helpful to sharpening our mind, really. Uh, so now, my now latest my commitment is trying to revive ancient uh, your knowledge in this country. India, I think, can do combination of knowledge, mind, uh, through that way, uh, so the richer inner value, and with modern education, that help us material development and technology, these things. Uh, so combination, material development, modern, modern thing, modernization, provide us physical comfort, not mental comfort. I think you experience, you say, very uh, millionaire or billionaire. I also uh, found some occasion, very rich person. Quite sure, you see, millionaire. But when we sat and some sort of heard that, because of Nansa education, formal sort of talk, then I found uh, uh, very rich, very educated, and some are the uh, chancellor of big university. Uh, but when we talk, uh, I found a very unhappy person. So their education failed to bring inner peace. Their money failed to bring inner peace. More anxiety, too much stress. So, uh, in inner value, inner peace is concerned, ancient Indian knowledge. Uh, they say, have the ability to bring inner peace, not through prayer, uh, not through faith, but full of knowledge about the system of our emotion and how to tackle these emotions. So that's, uh, you see, your tradition. So you, India, uh, Indian, can combine modern value, 
and the engine value combined so that uh, people get uh, physical well-being, similarly uh, mental well-being. So that's my uh, third, third, third commitment, right? So, so you, uh, you, you can you can help me in that respect, please. Uh, now the, nowadays, whenever I have the opportunity talking with Indian uh, Indian friends, some scholars, some government officials, uh, some uh, uh, scholars, or uh, some uh, the universities, say I am now talking. You see these things. So response from public, uh, very very encouraging, so hopeful. So please you also part of that uh, uh, work, that task, please. Thank you. Uh, with the, the moral ethics, uh, well, well, or secular ethics, this eventually, you see, uh, with this sort of awareness, the, from kindergarten level up to university level, then India's these existing corruptions and huge gap rich and poor and caste sort of divisions these certainly can can reduce so these through awareness through education then i think there are really possibility to create genuine equal happy society and with this respect uh, with, with this connection with this connection I also, you see, one of admirer of European Union. Not talking about my nation, my nationality, but think about Europe. So I very, very sort of happy the French election. I think people choose the right person. <laughs> like that. So now some questions. ဟုတ်ဆိုရင်ပြောဆိုရင်ကြီးဒီတုံးတဲ့ကလူဘူးတာတုံးတဲ့ဆောင်ပြီးမေးတဲ့စီကျူလာအေးသစ်ကိုန
So now we have to sort of analyze the mental level, emotional level. What is the value of anger or, or hatred? No value. Even physical health is very bad. Now scientists, medical scientists to say the constant anger, constant hatred, fear is actually eating our immune system. I think, do you, have, do you ever have some experience when you uh, visit Hazoda uh, hospital or seek some advice from doctor? Any doctor is telling you, oh, you should have more anger than your illness reduce. Listen to me. Have you ever met such doctor who advises this way? I think doctor always say, rest, calm. But doctor, you see, do not know uh, how to bring calmness. That's now the, the Buddhist psychology, ancient Indian psychology. Now today, you see, in, uh, you see, what is it, uh, Buddhism, I think, uh, at least we Tibetan Buddhists, I think we still kept all this knowledge through rigorous study. Uh, otherwise, in India and other Buddhist countries, not much study. Hmm. So Indians are they are to, to, to the uh, spiritual brothers, sisters, Hindus, Jains. Also, you see now, uh, I think very rare who really study seriously. They simply just satisfy to carry some puja like that, some ritual, isn't it? So, so now, motiv because of the motivation level, is to analyze what's the value of anger. Uh, once we realize anger, it's no use. Destroy our peace of mind immediately. In the long run, all negative, let's uh, say, kasoda or expressions or word attitude or action come. So once we have sort of a full conviction, anger is bring only negative thing, unhappiness thing, uh, then try to look what is the opposite of anger, then loving kindness. Uh, then uh, the loving kindness, what value? Ah, it brings immediately peace of mind. And through that way, your physical condition, health, physical health also become better. So then, uh, once we develop uh, awareness, anger is harmful, destructive, compassion, loving kindness is uh, helpful, then uh, that kind of sort of the awareness itself makes differences. Once you realize anger is very harmful, then the strength because of the intensity of anger gradually reduces. So I'm thinking kind of some of us. Oh cruelty, these kind of things automatically reduce. Cruelty uh, firstly, something happened, so then develop anger, and then the traces of anger remain there. And then whenever you find opportunity, then more cruel attitude, cruelty. So all these, we have to look motivation level. So actually, uh, the ahimsa, non-violence, uh, very much related with motivation level. You see, with very bad motivation, try to cheat other people, try to exploit other people, big smile, and a nice word, and some sort of gift. It's actually, violence. Like parent or teacher, 
You see, in order to cause the cause out, out, out of sort of, sort of sense of concern of their children, their uh, students, you see, well-being, sometimes use harsh words. For example, they might tutor. You see, some always you see uh, keep weep to threat me. So it looks violence. But motivation is sincere sense of concern of my well-being. So that's uh, actually non-violence. The number of occasion my tutor use harsh word. So at that moment, sometimes I feel angry. <laughs> now I really realize, you see, uh, all these is a concern for my own future, uh, my own well-being. So then you see, instead of anger, feel appreciation. Like that. Right, eh? Next question. Your Holiness, I have a question regarding contentment. I want to understand, in the sense, uh, as a person, I'm not very ambitious. But sometimes I think, uh, I don't know the difference between not being too ambitious and being content because my family or some friends tell me that you can do so much better and this, that, but I'm content with wherever I am. So I can't really understand hmm. the difference and understand contentment. Hmm? Uh, again, now think uh, motivation level and then result level. Result. Uh, for nation, for community, we should not practice contentment. Further development we need. Even material field, India, poor country, still we need more development. And even I think seven million human beings, I think, uh, I don't know it's precisely. Do you know the poverty? For example, America. You see, what percentage still remain under poverty? An idea? No idea. I think India. I think uh, much bigger number. Uh, poor, difficult. So we must sort of further economic development in that respect, and then further development. Firstly, you yourself, you see, make richer, and then can do more other people. Not just, you see, your luxury life, or, or like gambling, not like that. Hmm? Yeah. So, you see, make you yourself rich, and then help other people. Uh, so, the uh, personal level, only personal level, and then, uh, Contentment is a very, uh, very good practice, well, very important practice. You see, otherwise, you see, you want today uh, 100, because of the 100 rupees, then still feel, oh, I want 1,000 rupees, then 10,000 10, rupees. The 100,000 rupees you, you get, still you feel hungry. I want 1 million or billion like that. So, without practice of contentment, your mind always something hungry, hungry, hungry. So that uh, spoil your sleep, isn't it? A contented, uh, much better, isn't it? I think the, the purpose, uh, and according to the Buddhist tradition, you see, like Shantideva's, you see, advice, you see, uh, every action. We have to make, uh, we have to judge the result or purpose and motivation. Then in certain action, generally uh, consider negative, but with sincere motivation and reasonable purpose, then it becomes sort of or positive. We have to uh, take action like that. Okay. So the question is Jabra Chakswadarisha. You have to see the pros and cons of the situation. Oh. Okay. That also is related with Buddhist sort of concept. Everything is a patit samupad. Patit samupad. 
everything interrelated, interconnected. So under certain circumstances, certain action is wrong. And under certain circumstances, the same action is right. There's no something independent, absolute, everything interdependent, interconnectedness. What do you think? Too much flex, flexible, too much. <laughs> oh. This side, any question? Hi. How do you suggest someone overcomes a negative experience or situation? Oh. Now, you see, the, uh, uh, actually, I think ultimately related with our uh, mental attitude, mental attitude. Uh, now, for example, my own case, uh, at age 16, I lost my freedom. Age 24, I lost my own country. Since then, become stateless, the refugee. And worst thing, inside Tibet, a very, very difficult, very dangerous situation. And now there is actually danger, uh, some of the narrow-minded sort of officials. They really uh, thinking how to eliminate Tibetan unique cultural heritage, including language. Uh, so very sad, very sad. But then the uh, one uh, Indian master sort of advice is uh, when you face some problem, think whether that problem can overcome or not. If there is possibility to overcome, then no worry, no, so no need to worry, make effort. If, there's, if the situation is such, no way to overcome that suffering, then no use too much worry or sadness. So you should be practical. Uh, and then when you face some difficulties, well, use your intelligence. Look from a wider perspective, if that's really negative or not. And each negative thing looks negative, but side effects, some positive there. So once we, now for example, we become refugee because of too much of suppression inside Tibet. Uh, very sad, but that brings, on the other hand, more new opportunity. So thinking that line, then the anger intensity of anger reduce. So the animal cannot do that. Only we human being use our brain properly, look every event from wider perspective. That very very helpful. Next question. Not yet, not yet. Yeah, yeah, I'm one of the co-instructors for the University of Minnesota group, and I'm doing my PhD at Emory University. For my PhD research, I'm looking at death and dying from Tibetan Buddhist and medical perspective. Uh, in my research, I've observed that for many Buddhist practitioners, death is employed as an important point of reference for meditation. Could you please explain why it is so important for those meditators? Sure. Oh, you see, reminds impermanence, including death. Uh, does not mean just death is something important, right? Thinking death. No, other hand, you see, the sort of our sort of the, the habit, right? Or thinking, <coughs> I live hundred year, or something. So then. Uh, certain sort of, because of that, uh, the facilities where, certain sort of uh, 
thing can uh, for this life. More money, uh, including fame, and for that reason, you see exploitation, and in order to develop some bigger name or fame, sometimes uh, telling lies <laughs> or pretended like that. So all these negative things, many negative things, negative action, which is related with the concept, I remain permanently, I remain a much longer period. Like I think the uh, king who constructed Taj Mahal, I think they consider they remain long period. And Honecker, the form, the party chief of East, uh, East Germany, he mentioned uh, the Berlin Wall remain 100 years. Uh, so, you see, the, some kind of the concept of permanent, I will remain for a long period, then many negative things happen. Uh, so that's why, you see, thinking of life, there's limitation, at impermanent. Otherwise, you see, uh, if you carry your life, meaningful life, and then you should think, I should live long in order to serve others. Uh, and that's why, Chidu Chia Jituwa, Chidu, right? Nga Tikwa Mangzi Sagi Yin Chidu Chia Jituwa, right? Nga Kewa Mangzi Dugi Yin Chidu Chia Jituwa, right? Just now, Mita Kwa Kwa Mea Sengko, Kwa Duks Dain Samta Ajirisha. So uh, meditation on impermanence and death and has to be I mean, uh, understood within certain context of what you are going to uh, your purpose. So uh, in, in Tibetan uh, practice, we have the practice of longevity, I mean, ex as, uh, you call, uh, um, doing some practices for a long life. I mean, if you are able to do that within this understanding that you are going to serve others more than just for self selfish with selfish motive, then it's good. さあ、so um, within the teaching of the Four Noble Truths, the Buddha has actually taught about the first noble truth, regarding the first noble truth, the four characteristics of it, which are impermanence and suffering and then uh, no I mean, emptiness and selflessness. So with regard to the uh, meditation on impermanence, um, it is for the purpose of us, I mean, for the purpose that we realize that things it, are not... It is also quite, quite, sort of the, quite sort of interesting. The impermanent, uh, there are two levels. Like that, that's grosser level of impermanence. The subtle level of impermanence, now momentarily changing. Everything momentarily changing. Now, the, uh, the, the, because of the, just a, the atom, a, atomic level, atomic level. you see, nothing remains because of the static. Stand still. Always moving, always moving. So, that, uh, uh, that level of impermanence is the subtle level of impermanence. So, the subtle level of impermanence is the basis of impermanence. Now that, now, since things impermanence, those things impermanence, uh, it shows uh, which cause, so which, which cause create impermanence nature. Uh, then you see that uh, develop understanding the everything uh, I mean, changing is based on cause, due to cause. So then this body, 
changing momentarily. So what was the cause of this body? And then karma. Oh. And the karma uh, is a positive karma, negative karma, entirely depend on motivation. The clash, you know, clash, Just desire, emotions. anger, ignorance. You see, due to that, uh, any action is bad karma, causing suffering. So this is very, very kasoda, kasoda, kasoda related with whole kasoda Buddhist, uh, the psychology of the world, the psychology of the whole system. Right. Uh, usually, I think, the, in Tibetan, we are Buddhist, Buddhist country. Very, very so devoted. But the public level, the knowledge about Buddhism, very limited. So, uh, many of our faith is a blind faith, without knowing the whole sort of uh, philosophical background or system. So, I always tell him, Tibetan uh, should pay more attention for study. That's very important. Uh, some scholars say, Buddhism is not a religion. Buddhism is science of mind. It's quite true. So, therefore, hmm, そのまず存じくでで、ち、メダボコンスラムにて、ロナトンデルチェ、で、ロナトンデルチェ、ジョブソンサイアンニャンゴヨレ。とか、え、タバディ、チクラモルチョソンサンジョ。え、ラメカル
because the very soon the draft were draft about uh, secular ethics uh, uh, will, 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 will be available. Now we are working some draft already sort of there. So that's the only hope through education uh, from kindergarten up to university level the modern education something lacking now that modern education something wrong we never say that it is very relevant but not adequate so now those fields which modern education not yet cover now that in that part we must create supplementary or supplement like that so within this year i think uh, with the help of some scientists and Emory University and, and also Kazata, some Delhi, uh, India's some sort of organization, some NGO, we a few occasions we discuss. Now I think within this year, I think uh, they uh, finalize drafting. So, so these are the, the our method. And when, whenever you see you, uh, you live share with your friend from one individual, 10 human being, 10 human being, 100 human being, 100 human being, 100,000. That's, that's the way. You see, to share, to change way of thinking. So within my lifetime, I think next 15, 20 years, I, don't, I do not think I can see better world, change, change the world, but you can see uh, later part of the century, the first century, I think can be more sensible human being, more compassionate human being. I'm telling uh, some Chinese when I met, now China need some kind of cultural revolution. The previous cultural revolution uh, uh, motivated by uh, anger, hatred, so it becomes very destructive. Now time come under the leadership of Communist Party, with the, uh, the compassionate should uh, make compassionate society under the leadership of Communist Party. So uh, cultural revolution uh, with compassion. Then, uh, first day, corruption in China automatically reduced. Otherwise, it's more power, more corruption. Uh, in India also now, a lot of corruption. So this self-discipline hmm, with sort of the conviction, honest, truthful, this related with sense of respect to other, sense of I say the oneness of human being, then the honest come. With honest self-discipline come. Then these wrong things automatically reduce. Uh, punishment from outside, uh, I think, teach us uh, cunningness. <laughs> wrong doings, you see, Kasoda, Kasoda, Reda, Pet, Sik. So if you, if you are in certain, some kind of rules and regulations are imposed on us, then we also have this intelligence and we can find ways to avoid them and to be cunning. So recently, uh, uh, my visit in uh, East India, so if, uh, I think one politician from BGB, you see, he company with me, so within a few days we become very close friend. Uh, then I, uh, one day I told him, I spent, uh, I have nine hours sleep, oh, and then five hours meditation, mainly analytical meditation. Oh, so that sharpening my mind, so so that I can cheat other people more easily. <laughs> then he responded. Oh, very nicely. Oh, he only six hours sleep. 
So he cannot teach, uh, he cannot cheat in other people. <laughs> so our intelligence, uh, uh, sometimes you see the negative kazoda, uh, kazoda, kazoda, neg negative kazoda. Uh, oh, you negative way. So like that. So therefore, hmm, I think uh, honest, truthful. That very much related with less self-centered attitude and think more about others' well-being. Then uh, your way of life become more honest, more truthful. So that brings self-discipline, anger, attachment, this part of our mind. Uh, but then uh, awareness, self-discipline, reduce. We let Kasuta, Kasuta, Kada anger that he recovered, the work on Chimu, which is self-discipline. So with self-discipline, we will not let ourselves be taken astray <coughs> by uh, anger and so forth. So thank you. Now time come. And OK, uh, I really appreciate and I really encouraged uh, say, uh, uh, at least, I think, uh, two, three decades ago, Rebecca, when you sunju. So the sort of effort now really brings some good result. Now you should consider seed further develop. Okay. Okay. So uh, one dimension of it is ethical education. But since children from the hostel come from different backgrounds, some of them are Muslim, some of them are Christian, some of them are Hindus, while we were uh, trying to teach them about ethical education, we sort of came across this challenge that we cannot put one ethics over other. We can't tell that this ethics is better and this is supposed to be done, this is not supposed to be done because every child has his own faith. We don't want to change that faith. So we had this challenge as to how to uh, tell children something which is common to all humanity. And that's how we came across secular ethics. Now, secular ethics as a concept, if you are aware of, is a concept which is not very closely related to religion. It does not sprout out of religion. Ethics is not concentrated with religion. Ethics, it is ethics for everybody, for the entire mankind, for the beneficial of entire mankind. And there are various competencies. So we started teaching our children about these competencies, but uh, our program is not just about teaching or taking classes. We had different ways to uh, involve children in this. For little children, we had activities where they were talking about and there were stories shared about appreciating kindness and other competencies. And the senior children were involved in doing something which, is, which they like, which you know gives them space for their own creativity. So uh, first they started by painting panels. They got into uh, groups and they discussed and they painted panels, uh, which panels are put across in our hostel, Tonglen. But now our project has taken like a preliminary level and the secular ethics project has two dimensions. The first dimension is called the secular ethics yatra, which is an educative and an interactive program. So the children get together and they go to schools where they have these interaction classes. That's a slump, sir. Slump. You see, no hope. Uh, so this monk, uh, he found, he noticed some children. Garbage. Uh, garbage. Oh. Oh. Eating. Picking something. Then, Eventually, he visited, visited their own sort of their home. Nothing, very poor. So uh, then, eventually, you see, he, uh, because of the thought, to create small place. These uh, children, you see, firstly some food like that, 
then gradually some sort of education. Then uh, I help, we help uh, my Dalam Trust, you say, help to build the Kasoda, uh, the, the ho ho hostel, hostel. Or, hostel or these things. Now, how many, how many years passed now? No, 14 years. Yes. Uh, I, hello everyone. Uh, I want to brief Your Holiness and everyone about the Secular Ethics Program. As uh, His Holiness told you that these children come from very poor background. They come from the slum area. Now they are educated and some of them are in junior classes and some of them have reached college. So uh, our ho program in the hostel is a holistic program. And there are different dimensions in the holistic program. We not only concentrate on educating them and making them academically sound, but we also think that it is our responsibility and we are committed to make them good human beings. We produce good human beings. That's what our main objective is. Human brothers, sisters, uh, and sort of uh, very fresh. So those young, young students, you see your mind uh, not yet spoiled. <laughs> now, you see, you are really uh, hopeful. You have the real sort of opportunity to change the world. Not by force, but by awareness through education. Basically, seven billion human beings uh, from birth, basic nature is more compassionate. There's no scientist to say. Uh, uh, so, since our basic nature is more compassionate, therefore there is real hope. It's our basic nature, it's anger, then not much hope. So, Karshaya, Kena Karshaya, Sisha. Does that book there? ま、さっきで、ま、ホステルのラボ、あ、キャラ、ケンスジュ。ホステルチララボ、キャラ、ま、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっ
uh, French Revolution and uh, Russian Bolshevik Revolution, then secular means something anti-religion. Uh, but actually, I make distinction. What is the real meaning of religion? It's compassion. No one against compassion. Dogs, cats, they also love, appreciate love, compassion. Uh, I think actually, they, during revolution period, France, uh, Russia, I think they, uh, uh, they Firstly, uh, I would like to express my greetings to young students. I usually is describing uh, generation of 20th century and a generation of 21st century. So I belong the generation of 20th century. So now gradually ending. You are a uh, generation of 21st century. So 21st century at the beginning. So if the generation of 21st century, if you make effort uh, with vision, uh, with optimism, you will see better future, better world more peaceful, more compassionate world. So sometimes I jokingly is telling people, hmm, you see, the generation, my generation, uh, 20th century, I think we create a lot of problems on this planet. Uh, so in order, to, in order to do more work, this 21st century generation. <laughs> If it's a world truly peaceful, oh, then I think you may remain relaxed. So world really troublesome. So therefore, you have sort of more responsibility, more work, you see, to change that kind of situation. So, so I really feel very happy seeing the young, uh, 